Run it up, to run it back. Yeah. Run it up, to run it back. Run it back. Run it up. Back. Happy Run Wednesday up. morning. Run now it's back. officially yeah. official. The NBA season starts tonight. We had two games last night, but tonight the entire docket is open up for everyone. This is Run It Back to my right. Stadium insider Sham Sharania to my left. Chandler Parsons just had another baby. I mean, you did it, but you know how that works. Lou Williams on the end. Are you feeling? It's the third day. How are you feeling? I'm getting there. Yeah? I'm feeling good. Chilling yeah. a little bit more each day, right? Let's do and it. And you've got the best in the business here teaching you. So. <laughs> I got it. It's my TV bit. It's yeah. easy. It's easy, easy. Um, so, yeah, we had some fun last night. Basketball was played. Banners were raised. Rings were given out. There was some smack talk uh, as well, but here we go. What do we think about the ceremony? Everyone loved it? Or meh. Yeah, I mean, it's a little dragged out. This week, but they are, it used to be even more dragged out, though. They used to call, like, every assistant coach, every, like, oh, equipment yeah. person, yeah. every front office member. This was pretty tame, in my opinion. It's tough to play the team that's doing this. You know what I mean? Like I we talked imagine. about yesterday, that's brutal. But listen, they deserved it. If you got a problem with it, do something about it. Well, a game was played shortly thereafter, and the Nuggets took care of business, picked up right where they left off, beat the Lakers 119-107. Um, Jokic, first triple-double of the season. I predict 82 triple-doubles for <laughs> Nikola Jokic. Uh, Jamal Murray had a good night. LeBron was legit. But then there was Anthony Davis, a.k.a. the face of the Lakers. Um, at least that's what LeBron said. He had zero points in the second half. Zero. Mm. Faces don't do that, do they? It's tough, and obviously that's going to be the headline because of all the expectations that he has coming into the season. He, everyone's talking about how good a shape he's in, how this is now his team. LeBron's taking the back seat, and early he 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 was aggressive, and I love the way he came out. He was going at Jokic, and he got that first early foul that kind of enabled him defensively. But it just confuses me that he, in the second half, when they they were making runs, he couldn't get to the free throw line. He couldn't, you know get one bucket and it's again Charles said it last night like for him to take that next step to be in MVP conversations you can't have games like this especially after all the talk back and forth with how he's <laughs> sick of the nuggets he's sick of hearing this stuff and you go and you know drop a goose egg in the second half of the opening night it's just a little concerning as a fan moving forward that maybe this guy hasn't changed maybe he's not that aggressive dog number one option right now and that's that's tough to be saying it on night one night one that's that's tough but again it's one game no, it's that's you pick everything deep, you need deep from the breath, and you played against the one guy that can expose anybody. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to overreact, but I think for him to be the one A guy on that team, he has to be more aggressive down the stretch, especially in the third and fourth quarter. I, it was a what two to four point game. Yeah, he has to demand more touches. I would like to see him with his back to the basket a little bit more, opposed to shooting so many jump shots and just put more pressure on the defense. But um, like just mentioned, shouldn't panic. Game one, it happens to the best of them. What's crazy is their head coach comes out and says, I want him to take six three pointers, which can you imagine if someone told us that? Like, <laughs> he took two. Yeah. He right. took two three pointers and the head coach is making it a point for him to be aggressive. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. Here's what I want to ask about Jokic and AD. Because if you, if you dropped a person on the planet, you said these two gentlemen do the same job, Mm -hmm. um, they would easily be like, oh, AD's the better of the two. Just physically, everything yeah. looks right. And yet, it is not that way. How wide would you say the gap is between Jokic and AD? It's massive. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. And as a former player, like, I, I've never played against prime Jokic like he, with the things he's doing right now. You don't understand it until you physically go up against him. It's his angles. It's his spacing. It <laughs> looks like he's playing with his son, tapping the ball to him. And this is a seven foot, 260 pound God. defensive player of the year candidate that he's just toying with. And, and we all know how good he can, you know, space the floor and pass the ball. But it's when you look at their bodies next to each other, he shouldn't be able to do this kind of stuff. No, nope. it doesn't make sense. He's to barely me. getting off the ground. Too. Barely. It's like a piece of he's, paper. Yeah, he's not leaving the earth, but dominating <laughs> the most athletic guy on the court. It's it truly is my bug. By the way, Jasmine Watkins, not that's not right. You yeah. can't be putting that on the Internet. Like it was, it was yeah. quick. That's why I love when NBA season's back, because I think NBA Twitter is better than any other Twitter that exists. Uh, oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> Internet is undefeated. Ever. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> it's that's it's night way. one. <laughs> yeah. It's already happening. Okay. That's yeah. Well done. Uh, Shams, 
did you? What did you learn, if anything, about the Nuggets last night that maybe you didn't know? I, I mean, I think a lot of people have been going all in on this narrative, this concept that Nikola Jokic doesn't care about basketball. He doesn't care <laughs> about, uh, you know, anything with the sport. He's not doing anything. I mean, this is a guy you can't do what he's doing, can't dominate the game the way he's dominating if you don't care for the game. And I saw one of his quotes after the game in the press conference. He said, like, this was a nice moment. Like, he really cherished. He's mm. like, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't understand how many people we impact on a daily basis, how many jobs we impact playing the game of basketball. And I think that wow. just gives you an insight on what Nikola Jokic really cares about. Like, he really cherishes this. And then on the other side, like, Christian Brown, the way he played, I mean, only five points, two rebounds. You, you wouldn't think his impact was that was, was that big, but he was everywhere on the floor. I just, I, I love the way he plays, the energy that he brings off the bench. It's, it's crazy. It, it's crazy, too. Like, usually at a, a ceremony like that before, there's some sort of hangover, right? There's some sort of letdown. Mm -hmm. There's some sort of, okay, let's ease our way in. This team is just mature and they're poised and it's just it's just business as usual and they didn't miss a beat last night. I would argue that him going back home and the horses and all that, I think that's healthy. If you're if you're 365, 24-7 of something, I mean you need a break, right? Everyone needs a break. And people were getting on him because God forbid he enjoyed his personal life when he wasn't on the court. And I don't care. Like, I don't care why? what he's saying and he doesn't care. That dude clearly trained very, very hard. Yeah. In the I would love to see his workouts. Yeah, like, I, I would too. I really would like to see it what, might what be he some, does on offense. It might be some weird stuff we've never seen before, but he's in <laughs> great shape. I he wasn't tired. Guarantee there's no night. jumping involved. No, there no. wasn't <laughs> even jumping last night. No <laughs> machinery. I want it to be all outside and natural. By the way, we have heard from Magic Johnson. The first tweets of the NBA season have come mm. in, um, and he is just—he's one of the best guys. Is he tonight? We no learned that the world hope. champion Denver Nuggets are going to be tough to beat in the NBA playoffs. Well said. Well, well, said. Said. well said. I think we all can confirm. I think we yeah. are <laughs> all sure. on the same page as that. Sure. So we can sit here and we can say he's unstoppable and nobody has a, an answer for Jokic, but you can't, you can't play the entire season that way. You have to have some sort of a strategy, some sort of a plan, Lou. Like, what, what do you do? If you're the opposing coach, what do you tell your guys? As crazy as it is, I think people still make Jokic out to be underrated. God, in, a, in, a, in a weird way, he's still, he's still underrated, and you kind of take him for granted because he doesn't have all the athleticism that you would expect from him. And he just gets the job done. So if you're opposing coaches, you pray. <laughs> <laughs> you pray. <laughs> I, I, the only time I've seen Nikola Jokic like, truly kind of phase was in the bubble, which is ironic. Really? You know, D when the way Dwight Howard played Jokic in, in the in the Western Conference Finals, like he was up in him, he was he was he was he was you know, he was he was touching, pulling, grabbing, like he was really physical with Jokic. He was talking you know he was talking his <laughs> ish. No 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 I'm not like you I'm not like you we'll I, I, I'm not the unlimited we'll card like you. Yeah. but but he was he was he was really getting in Nikola Jokic like like everywhere on the floor and you know the Lakers bigs Jackson Hayes Christian Wood Anthony Davis those guys are all athletic I think they're all built well but those guys aren't the physical presence that I think you know we'll, we'll see if someone you know I think Zubac can can mm. can mess with them a little bit down low but th there's not that many bigs now in the league that can that, that can play physically but also when it's someone offensive minded like Anthony Davis you Get him in foul trouble. Like, like, make that a point early in the game, which he did, but he somehow stopped going to that in the second half. But get him early one, two fouls. Get Najee in the game, and then you go on your runs. But to, to be able to play him heads up one-on-one -on -one and for that <laughs> long, it's just it's not going to happen. There's no recipe for that. There's no recipe for yeah. that. I said um, yesterday he was unguardable. Yeah. It's it's true. I look like it's a just, genie today. Yeah. It's, it's hard. It's just hard to Can't accept that. Like you have to come up with something. Somebody has to come up with something. Uh, Jamal Murray, 21 points on the evening. Um, ceiling wise for Jamal Murray, Lou, what do you think that is? I think the ceiling is high for him. I thought he played well yesterday. Uh, didn't force anything. Was efficient. Um, just let the game come to him. And I and I think he can do that with the with with playing next to Jokic. You know, just coming off of screens, playing off of the ball taking the opportunities that he can take. I think he's going to be a 23 to 25 point per game night guy um, this year. So uh, another all-star year and another deep playoff run. Yeah, I agree. That that whole streak of no all-stars. No, it's that's done. out. That's done. He's an all-star. He's all NBA this year. This team's going to win so many games. <laughs> They're getting two all-stars and it's going to be those two guys. Yeah, I'm curious. You played against Jamal in that series that you guys had 
you know, I, don't, I hate to bring it up, you know, in, in, yeah. in, in the don't bubble. Don't say, oh, just, just man, don't say but, but But when you, when you watch <laughs> the way he grew in that series in those playoffs and now, like, what do you make of his game? Obviously, he had, a, he had an absence with the ACL in, 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 in between. Yeah, I, I think he's just tired of being left out of a lot of conversations when it comes to the top guards in the league. And I think that started in a bubble when him and um, I think Donovan Mitchell, Mitchell were going at it. Um, they were going toe-to-toe. And I think from that point on, he hasn't looked back since. You know, I think this year he solidifies himself as a top five, top six point guard, all-star caliber guy. Um, and he keeps the, keeps the ball rolling. Which is crazy because even yesterday we we're, were talking about, is he a top five point guard? Yeah, here we go. And I'm like, look, I'm like Garland, Fox. I'm trying to find people better than him for some reason, but they're not. He's a winner. He can do everything. He defends. He can shoot the ball at an elite level. So he's he's kind of going into that real stardom all NBA level. And it's and it's tough. He's, he's standing next to a two time MVP. You yeah. Know? Right. So he kind of gets overlooked, but he's there. And then I feel like the team itself gets overlooked because it's Denver, and for some reason we don't put them in the splash category of, ooh, must pay attention. Oh, if this it's, kid was on the uh, yeah. Lakers or Forget Knicks, it. he'd be a, you know, A-lister. All day, every day. Yeah. We talk about it. Speaking of, LeBron, 38 years young, 21st season. We know all this. He did have 21 points. He pay, played 29 minutes. I, I can't ask if you're – at this point, yes, we're all impressed. I mean, to say we're not is, is silly. What do you make of what LeBron is still capable of doing? It's unbelievable. It's just the, the, we talk about it year in, year out, and it continues just to amaze people. It's just his body and his physicality and how much time he clearly spends in the off season and how much money and effort just to continue to be in this shape. You see him in transition. There's no difference than him, than Braun second year and LeBron <laughs> this year. It is outrageous. Uh, it's a difference. Maybe a little bit above the rim, but the okay. physicality, right. getting out in transition, right. bullying dudes, like it is crazy that he's doing, I can barely get, I'm on load management today being here. <laughs> this guy is still putting up a 20 piece and open, like it's ridiculous. It's, pre- it's pretty impressive. It's nuts. It's, it's, I don't know how he does it, but I didn't catch those genes. <laughs> Maybe you'll pass them on Maybe to I your will. children. Yes. Um, the 29 minutes Darvin Ham was asked about, he said, is this, is this probably going to be the norm for LeBron? And, to his credit, Darvin Ham was like, yeah, probably. Would you, mm. what'd you think of that? Is I that mean, LeBron James is 38 years old. Come on. He's in year 21. I think, I, I think he set an, such an unrealistic bar for himself. I mean, <laughs> he, he's been playing in the mid-30s over the last several seasons in, in minutes play. So, obviously, this is a Lakers team that's trying to play till June. It's not about opening night. And so, I, I do think the Lakers clearly have set the tone that they're going to manage his minutes more this season. And also, another thing, he's recovering from a torn tendon in his foot. Uh, that that he's rehabbed, he's fully recovered, but he spent all summer re- kind of rehabbing that. And so early in the season, you want to manage his minutes. Which is smart, by the way. If they have any chance in the mm-hmm. postseason, later in the season, they need LeBron healthy. So don't blow your wad early now, playing him 30, 35 minutes when they're going to be in the playoffs. And if they go in the playoffs full steam and he's full steam, they're a tough team to beat. But no reason to rush anything early. It's still amazing to me that he's in year 21. Mm. He's 38 years old. And we have such a high expectation mm-hmm. level for this guy. I think yeah. early on in that game, he was picking his spots. Didn't play a lot in the preseason. I thought he was trying to get his legs under him. But then after that, he started picking up steam, getting out in transition, not blowing past guys, but just deboing, getting straight D-ball. to the rim, laying the ball up, screaming, asking for fouls. I think that's incredible. I hadn't seen anything like it. Do you start a LeBron game <clears throat> now that we are as far into his career as we are thinking, Will this be the game that I see something that makes me think, okay, he's, this is it? I think we've seen games where he's looked human. It's like, all right. And then second half, <laughs> he changes the narrative every time. So at this point, we should just enjoy the ride and yeah. wait till the wheels fall off. That's fair. What a nice optimistic way to look yeah. at it. Who got the calculator out last night and figured out how much LeBron's outfit was worth? Because that is, that's something. $28,000 outfit, which... I mean, it's probably more than that. I didn't see the watch. The watch itself is going to be something. But mm-hmm. there it is. <clears throat> nice bag. Nice. What do we think? Well, the bag is expensive for sure. I was about to say, a lot of that is the bag. <laughs> yeah. It's a fitter brick, guys. <sighs> I guarantee you. The watch. Me. It's, it's a, it's like a it. brick. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, it's I, a well, brick. Well, I actually kind of like it. But it, I, but... Again, You're giving some praise to Ron today. This is weird. Am I drunk? Show. Yeah, you <laughs> must be. <laughs> I might yeah, be so but he's, drunk. He's going to say it's a $28,000 outfit, so he doesn't care what I think. Well, it photographs differently than it does on the walk, doesn't it? I'm actually shocked it's only $28,000. I'm telling you, we're not yeah. taking into account jewelry and whatnot. No, definitely Yeah, because yeah. that's not, mm-mm. But the bag's not. Shams, I think you could wear that, that top. I think it's kind of your vibe. 
I don't know about that. Yeah, you can. This is a little aggressive, at least on the camera. The bag looked empty. It did yeah. look empty. That was just a piece. He was just, he was just showing empty. off. Luke he, can tell when a bag is empty. The <laughs> bag was empty. Yeah. Um, then we also have the rings. We have, we're judging everything right now, all the aesthetics that were going on last night. The rings that the Denver Nuggets uh, received before the game. Did we like the... Shout out Jason of Beverly Hills. Yeah, this guy, I mean, he does them every year, right? Yeah. I mean, Good how do you not like a championship? I'd right? say I'd, I'd feel for the Emirates. Yeah. Ooh, you moving. got layers to yeah. it. Yeah. It slides out. It's like a transformer. It's like a safe. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's, that's for your ring. drugs, kids. That's where you put that. Like, <laughs> yeah. What is that? <laughs> that's okay. a sick she ring. She said it. That's a well, sick ring. Why else do you have a that's weird a beautiful pocket? Ring. Yeah. That's a sick ring. How heavy are those things? I wouldn't know. We wouldn't know. <laughs> well, I thought maybe you held one. I don't know. <laughs> They're heavy. They're, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're heavy. Not I'm, practical That's to wear. about as close as I've ever been to one. So <laughs> thanks for bringing that up. Well, happy Wednesday. Yeah. There was another game. Uh, stayed on the West Coast for this one. Little Suns, little Warriors action last night. And uh, look, we're going to read into everything because the season started. That's what we do. But the Suns beat the Warriors 108 104. Mm. Uh, Booker. 32, 6, and 8. Durant, 18, 10. Curry, Curry had his 27. But P.S., 4 for 14 from 3. And Chris Paul did start, and he did play 34 mm. minutes. I know there was no Bradley Beal, Shams, but things on the offensive side looked pretty, pretty good. Is there a player that surprised you the most? I don't know if surprised right word, but Yusuf Nurkic. I think seeing mm. the impact that he had, 14 points, 14 rebounds, 5 of 8 from the field. This is not a guy that's going to be demanding the ball down low. He's literally just playing uh, really out of the high post. He's playing a lot of pick and roll. He's he's doing whatever's asked him in the offense, setting hard screens for Kevin Durant, for Devin Booker, and, and soon here, either Thursday or Saturday, Bradley Beal. And that's why the Suns went out and prioritized him, got Nasir Little. They really added depth to this team. They knew that was an issue last year. Uh, after they made the trade for Kevin Durant. When, when you trade Mikhail Bridges, Cam Johnson, you deplete your, your, your bench, you, de you deplete your lineup, and I think they, they were able to kind of go after a lot of those guys, replenish their, their bench, and they believed at the end of the day, Yusuf Nurkic was a better fit for them and to compete for a championship than DeAndre Ayton. Organizationally, roster-wise, I think everyone was on the same page, and we saw Nurkic, I think, shine last night. I mean, that's let's stick with that. Is he that much of a better fit than DeAndre Ayton was? I, I do. I think so. I mean, listen, DeAndre Ayton's more talented. He's going to have bigger games. But for this team and that roster and that big three, you want Nurkic making the extra pass. You don't want him back to the basket demanding the ball. You don't want the issues that we heard about with DeAndre Ayton right. in the locker room and the, the selfishness. That Those are all gone. Nurkic knows how to play with stars. He just played with Damian Lillard. and you know He's been there before. But he was so critical. Shams hit it. Him and Akogi last night, they were everywhere. And those guys are going to get looks. Those guys are going to have valuable minutes because all the attention is going to go on that big three. And you watch the way their offense was set up last night, too. This, this is a wet dream for Devin Booker, right? Like he's never had this much space. Because if, he, you know, if he's driving to the nail, KD's guy's not helping. Brad Beal's guy's not sinking. So, like, he, he's... He's just in the gym by himself now, a lot of these possessions. And you can see last night he takes advantage of it. Yeah, and I think the mindsets are different um, between Nurkic um, and DeAndre Ayton. You know, one is a former number one pick, if I'm not mistaken. Um, he's coming into that fold thinking he and Devin Booker are the one and two punch. Right. Um, so mentally, I think that's how he carried himself with Nurkic coming in. He understands that he's just gonna, he's gonna eat off the land. He's gonna uh, take the advantage of the opportunities that's given to him playing off of those guys. And I think we saw that last night, how he played. It's a great point. Nurkic knows his role. He doesn't, he doesn't want to shine. He wants to do it. He's thankful to be there, basically. He's almost. happy to be there, yeah. he, but he should be because yeah. he's in a great situation. But that's a great point because as a number one pick, you have expectations. You, your, your people are in your ear. Oh, you can do more. You can <laughs> do more now. We'll see how much more you can do. But Nurkic is a great fit so far. So the, the post-game workouts, I, I don't get it. Um, maybe somebody can make it make sense to me. But is, is, is Does it that make sense? I, is yeah, I think that's normal. I've, a good amount of teams do it, yeah. You do it then so you don't have to do it tomorrow. tomorrow. But you don't do anything tomorrow. But, like, in the hallway like this? Well, yeah. Yeah, you get it done. Well, if you're, if you're the away team, they're probably not even allowing you in the weight room. Yeah, so, that's what yeah. they've So this is post this is, work. this is all the Warriors basically provided for them. So you have to get a certain amount of workouts a week, right? So why not do it now when you're when you're And warm? then you go to the plane? And a lot of teams yeah. are starting to go to this style where we're just gonna set up in the hallway huh. opposed to trying to share a weight room with you. Especially when you probably give us give us the B weight room where yeah. <laughs> we got we got the same stuff anyway. So we we'd rather do it in our own space out in the hallway, let the music play. I mean, the video of, of a world-class athlete in the hallway 
Yeah. Just it's kind of amazing. Well, every, like everything beach, is like, everything is documented now. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. This is, but this is the norm. This is interesting that the media is able to record. That's this. what I thought. I, I feel like we're just intruding happened. right now. But again, now like Yuta Wanatabi doesn't have to stay an hour after practice tomorrow to work out. He just gets it done. Do you want to say anything about him uh, other than that, or uh -oh. while uh -oh. we're sitting here? I, I said <laughs> last year that he wasn't gonna be in a three-point <laughs> contest, and literally. <laughs> Asia roasted, <laughs> <laughs> which, by the way, he was in a three-point contest. So you, you were right about that. He's so a good that. player, though. What eight points? I never said he was a bad Four player. Shaw. Solid play. I know. I'm just saying. Know. We never the, said he wasn't a bad player. When you think player. of the elite shooters in the NBA, does Yuta Watatabi's name come to your mind? Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Stop. Here, dude, this People are trending nuts. for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> you just spoon-fed me again. That way, you're you're terrible, Rashad. But no, he's not terrible. It's, no, you are. It's, it's quite, oh, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Um, Devin Booker, <clears throat> you know we're doing this. We're doing it all season long. I'm going to ask you top 10 in the league? Yes. Yes. Okay, but then yes. what are the other nine? <laughs> <laughs> well, the five we said yesterday. Okay. Uh, plus. Throw plus Jason Tatum. Plus Jason Tatum, who <laughs> we missed Jason. yesterday. Yes, we did. <laughs> Throw in, I don't remember who he said yesterday, but that's not the point. Yeah, yeah. The point is, this dude has developed, it doesn't, he made me think last night they don't need a point guard. This really? Guy can, okay. This guy can play make, this guy can handle the ball. The plays he made down the stretch and pick and roll, finding the open man, and kudos to Eric Gordon and Nikogi last night who stepped up and hit big shots. But Devin Booker's not just a scorer. He's not just to go get a bucket. He has evolved into this absolute star. He can handle pick and roll. He can go off the block. He posted up Steph early and got the M1. You take mm. Took advantage of his size, but it doesn't matter who their first option is, second option, third. Last night it was Devin Booker. He was the closer. Thursday night could be someone different. So that's fluid. It's fluid. It's who it's going to be. A, it's going to okay. be yeah. Whoever's hot that night. And last night was his night. KD struggled a little bit. He's not going to do that multiple games in a row. Next game it's probably going to be Kevin Durant. Then it's going to go back to Book. Then it's going to be Bradley Beal. It's it's a great problem to have. Great problem. I mean that's kind of fun. And I thought Eric Gordon was solid for them as well last night. Um, made some big shots down the stretch. Uh, didn't shoot it particularly well, but I thought in the fourth quarter he was the one-two punch that they needed to close that game out. Draymond, no, uh, no Draymond last night. Um, as far as his absence goes, are you working right now? God, yes, I love when yes, Sean's is working. Yes. I just think like, someone's, I think someone's getting traded. Who got traded? Right. No, no, James Harden reported back to the 76ers facility today. So 10 days he oh, was I'm away. i start kicking in today. <laughs> and, and James yeah. Harden is back. But listen, he's, he's been out for the last 10 days. He, yeah. has, he hasn't been a part of any team activities. He has only done one five-on-five five this entire last month of, of training camp uh, has not played in preseason. So uh, I, I don't expect to see James Harden on the floor anytime soon, but he has returned to the team. All right. They play their opener tomorrow do in Milwaukee. Foul, do it for Sal Philly, JH. Let's go. Can live talk, breaking can news. Can we talk about the live break? I know. Just another day, Just another day, Sean. Better than CNN. That's all I know. Um, no Draymond. I want to know, like, how does it impact this team, and, and are they... Are they too small? I mean, for sure, they need Draymond Green. Right? I think they even said he was interviewed during the game, and he even said, like, I'm our team's anchor defensively <laughs> because of my voice and, and the way I'm able to communicate with the players. And I think, yeah, the, the, the Warriors are believing that he is close to return. I mean, this is the four- to six-week ankle injury that he dealt with. So he's on the cusp of, of his return. I think it will be within this week. Uh, but for sure, I mean, Draymond Green is the engine. Of, of this team's defense. Yeah, and for them to be good and to be a contending team this year, they have to lock it defensively, and he is the heartbeat on that end. We, got, we know he can play, make, and facilitate and get guys in their offense, but his value comes on the other end. The way he talks, the way he you know, calls out screens, that's what he does. So I think for them to kind of be that team during the postseason, they have to lock up. We know what we're going to get with Clay. We know what we're going to get with Steph Curry. They're going to put up points. They're going to shoot a lot of threes. But defensively, these guys got to lock up, got to lock in. And then the growth of Moody and Kaminga and these guys who showed flashes last night that they're ready to take the next step as well. You know we're going to have all eyes on Chris Paul, Lou. That's, that's kind of where we are. 14-6-9. A couple key turnovers that he forced in the final minutes. Four for 15 from the field and zero for six from three. So let's assess his first game. You know, as crazy as this is going to sound after. <laughs> yeah, all the numbers. I, I, I thought he looked fine. I thought he, I thought he played well for them. Um, got those guys going in transition. I thought he made the right passes, made the right decisions in, in the open court. And then in the half court, I thought he got good looks for everybody just being solid um, and being himself. Does he start? Should he start? 
You, do you keep it this way? Nah, Draymond got to come you back. You can't. Yeah, yeah, right? Like, but this I, is but weird. But I think that, that gives the second group yeah. um, somebody that's going to make sure they get quality shots down the court every time down. Yeah, the way Chris Paul plays and the way he demands the ball and how good he is in pick and roll, you're almost enabling him by having him in that first unit. Let him play with that second unit. Let him carry Kaminga, Moody, get those guys, like Gary Payton. Those guys need a captain guy. to kind of run that right. offense, and he is that guy. And, and last night he showed flashes, <laughs> but yeah, I think he's better off on that second unit um, and can have a huge impact on this team. Why does it matter if you start? I mean, isn't the finish the whole thing? Like, why is that such know. a big deal to some dudes? But yeah. Is it just ego? That's just ego. I've started 100 games. I'm 17 of, years yeah, old. Like, I wouldn't know. I mean, a lot of it's, 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 you. A lot of it's <laughs> ego, right? Like your boys are asking training camp, are you yeah. starting is like the first yeah. question. How many points do you have and are you starting? That's like, that's just And like, you're also Chris Paul, it's, you know. That's fair yeah. too. Yeah. Legacy. Uh, after the game, Charles Barkley said the Warriors are the fourth best team in California, Lou. That's, do you agree? That's a little, that's cap. That's cap. <laughs> Big old cap is what cap. we say in Atlanta. But uh, no, I mean, it's, it's uh, listen, it's early. And Dre, with Draymond coming back, I think that gives them um, the unit that they're going to need. We do this every year with them. They'll be in a hunt at the end. So, no, I don't agree with that. Yeah, I think they're literally second. I think the Lakers are the best. And I can't trust the Clippers yet. To right, they, show me. they could be the second best team, maybe even the first best team. But, but what about the Kings? They showed some stuff. The Kings are up and coming. The Kings had a great year. It'll be interesting to see if they build on that, if they get off to a hot start again. But I don't know why I whined about it, by the way. I'm so, the, what about the Kings? Yeah. I'm not, not, no horse in that race. It's Steph Curry. Like he's, I, that's, that's what it is. Uh, we're taking a quick break. Here, when we come back, a full slate in the league. Spurs are playing tonight for the first time. You're welcome, America, <laughs> when Run It Back returns. And it's day two of the NBA season, so we got a full slate tonight. Celtics, Knicks kicking things off. First time we get to see Drew Holiday and Kristaps Porzingis. Uh, what are you looking forward to there, Sean? I want to see Kristaps Porzingis back at the Garden. I mean, this is where he started his career. This is where he was supposed to be the next New York Knicks superstar, but now <laughs> he's kind of the third, fourth fiddle on any given night. And you know, I want to see Drew Holiday for the first time in that Celtics uniform. Yeah, same. I think Drew Holiday just, he, he's going to mesh so well with that team, especially defensively. Everyone's talking about the Dame and the Brad Beal. I feel like that's that's more offense, right? This, yeah. Drew Holiday's kind of connect the dots there. He's going to help, you know, take off the pressure on that defensive end for Tatum and Brown so they can really go and be who they are and you know, combine for 60 every night. How are we going to gauge that? Like, who has the more valuable turn? Is it going to be Kristaps and Drew or Dame with Milwaukee? How are we going to figure that out? I think everyone measures that by winning. I just, the, the more they win, the better they're going to look and the better impact they have. That's the name of the game. So I, like I just said, I think Drew defensively and offensively, he's a capable to go get a bucket. That helps a lot. And losing Marcus Smart and that kind of tough DNA he's going to provide. But again, when you look at the Bucks and you look at Dame Lillard, how he can space the floor and give Giannis even more of a lane to attack and do what he does, that's also high value. We've got Jason Tatum top five already, uh, depending on the day. And as far as <laughs> keeping him there, I want to ask you, Lou, what, <laughs> if you could name it, what's missing from his game currently? Jason Tatum? Yeah, if anything. I mean, what do you think? Hmm. Nothing. <laughs> I, I, that's it? That's he's it. good to go? No, there's got to be something he can do. I wish I could expand on it. Like, I, I think he's good to go. Something, is there something un intangible that he maybe, I, I don't know. A leadership thing, or I mean, be better in the playoffs. Like last year, so that, but, yeah. But, yeah. I mean, I feel like we'd be nitpicking to try to yeah, find something like, wrong. It's not like, oh, he has no left, or oh, he's, right. he, he has got it all. <laughs> he's like, one of the more complete players in the league. But that doesn't that doesn't make me feel good. I That's feel like no everyone's fun. got room for improvement. Yeah, not him. He's perfect. Wow, that, did you hear that, Jason Tatum? He is our MVP pick for this. Yes, year. he is. Oh, I forgot. You guys do both have him as your MVPs. Okay, my bad. At Gotta least you stuck to our guns. You stuck yeah. to it. You stuck to it. Uh, Jalen Brown. The big the big question was the max extension. Will he? Won't he? He did. Um, so long term, he's a Celtic. Was that the best move? I think that was the right move to make. Um, that gives them that stability with that one two punch. It's proven that it's working. Um, you know, in, in a league where so many guys get moved so much and you, don't, you can't even get used to somebody playing on a team, for them to have <laughs> um, this group together for uh, X amount of years and, 
and you watch Denver and you see that how those dividends have paid off for them, it's important to keep those two guys together, to have them there. And, you know, you add Drew and Przingis to that mix. Let's see if they get over the hump. Yeah, I agree. People talk about his contract. And well, now he's getting paid like a top 10 player. He's got to be a top 10 player. Like, first of all, who else were they going to pay? Like, he's, he's there. You keep him under contract. He's very good. Him and Jason Tatum work. They oh. have the infrastructure to be a championship team. But, yeah, with that contract, there definitely comes pressure. And I'd love to see him take that next step. I'd love to see him all NBA. He's, he's going to be an all-star. But, again, that, get, that gets measured by winning. The minute they win a championship, then all of a sudden that contract is worth it. A bargain, even. Yeah. like. <laughs> Where are they duo-wise on y'all's list of current duos in the league? Are there any duos anymore? I think I, all the duos have turned I mean, into trios. Yeah, I like, mean, who are we thinking? I'm taking we KD duo? and Steph before them. I mean, oh, you got this wait. is of all time or now? No, what? No, now. What? Yeah, but what? Who? Tatum and Brown? Yeah, like now. Oh, I'm, I'm talking. I uh, all the yeah, duos are, like, all the I mean, duos are trios now. I guess all you could go KD and Book now. You could Luka go, and Kyrie. How, how do you not do Jokic and Murray when they just won it all? So Jokic I mean, they're Murray. yeah, we do Jokic and Murray. They're top five. Top five. <laughs> <laughs> we were really bad at numbers. They're top five. That My top bad. Five I thought you meant ever. I was like, well, there's yeah. Well, then there's Jordan and Pippen. Yeah, there's and a then few. Everyone else. Yeah. Like, <laughs> after that, um, on the Knicks side of things, it's gonna be fun. Major superstar becomes available, and of course, we're already looking ahead to that on day two of the season. Do you think, Shams, the Knicks will be front and center going after that person? I mean, l l let's, let's look at the idea of, of the New York Knicks. They have R.J. Barrett, they have Emmanuel Quickly, they have Julius Randle, Mitchell Robinson. That's just players that they could potentially trade. Mm -hmm. But this is the biggest part. They have eight first-round draft picks that they could trade. They have four of their own, four from other teams that they've acquired in trade. So you have all those players, I mean, them... There's a handful of teams around the league that literally have a boatload of draft picks. The Knicks are one of them. So, yes, I mean, when that superstar that they want to go all in on, we know they were engaged in talks with Donovan Mitchell and with the Utah Jazz. They did not get him. They're really one first-round pick away, but they didn't want to pull the trigger. They, they, they kept, you know, what they had, went with Jalen Brunson as their lead guard. But, you know, whenever there's a, there's a big-name player available, they will be right there, no question. Yeah, those it's, those picks to me are more valuable than yeah. the players on that current roster. And now you look to a team that would be rebuilding and reshaping its roster when when you can get all those picks. So I look at like a Philly. I look at Joel Embiid mm -hmm. where if they're going to start from scratch and Daryl Morey is the king of gathering all these assets, that would make sense to me. Because if I'm New York, I would trade everybody on that roster besides Jalen Brunson. So Brunson's the only untouchable. Well, he got, but he comes with Josh Hart. And Josh Hart. They're, yeah. they're a duo. They're a package. <laughs> they're a top five. <laughs> they too. have to be together. They're a top five. Do you team. agree, Lou? Like everyone but Brunson. Yeah, get I agree. Done. Yeah, I, I agree. If if you can land a, a a major player in this league, get rid of everybody. And but then, then who's left to? Well, then by the way, you're you're New York and you're the Knicks, and once you get that star, you're gonna you have to you're gonna have people to come. You're gonna have guys take less money to come. People right. want to play in New York. It's a huge market. It's a great city. It's it's. It's gonna help to get that marquee. It's name. shocking to me that it's not all, like it's New York. I mean, I uh, that's well, that's why they're always gonna be. You know, they're always gonna get the meeting. Always got an opportunity. Yeah. It's the greatest place. Anyways, uh, oh, the, another sorry. game happening tonight: Battle in Texas, Mavericks, Los Spurs. Um, the Mavs have some questions, Shams. What's the biggest one they need to answer? Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving. I think offensively, one of the best duos in the league last year, at least. Analytics and stats showed it, but to me, their defensive cohesiveness, how they play together defensively, it's going to be an impact on the rest of the team. And we didn't see that hmm. that duo and, and that team, I think, gel the way everyone expected to. I think they were one of the home court advantage com competing teams when they got, got Kyrie Irving, they ended up missing the play-in tournament. But listen, you have to give Nico Harrison and, and that front office credit. They did beef up that roster, getting Grant Williams, drafting Derek Lively, uh, getting Seth Curry. I think this is a team that now believes with new chemistry, having a different slate of guys in the locker room, that this team will be better. And we haven't talked about this team at all. At mm -hmm. all. We haven't talked about them at all. So I feel like, you know, if, if done right, they can be a dark horse in, in, in the West. They can really upset some teams and really put themselves in a position. And they don't have the expectation level of, you know, a, a Phoenix or, you know, a Golden State or one of those because we hadn't talked about them. And even though they have Luka and Kyrie, it's kind of crazy to think that they're an underrated team in the West. Yeah, and they have the talent, obviously, with those two. And then you look at the depth at the garbage. They have Josh Green, Jaden Hardy. Those kids, I think, are going to take a really big step forward. They both can score. Josh Green defends. Tim Hardaway Jr. is you know, going to come and provide a shooting <laughs> off the bench with, with Seth. Uh, 
Seth Curry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so they have depth. I love the kid Lively, who's going to be perfect with Luka and pick and rolls as that lob threat that's going to pull in the defense and just kind of space four shooters around him. So I, I, I agree with Lou. I think that they have a chance. I think they need to defend. They need to figure out which lineup works best with Kyrie and Luka. I think it's going to be Josh Green is going to be the guy that's going to defend the best player. Like He's going to be there, Kogi. But yeah, they, they have the talent. They have the depth. Um, what happens if this doesn't work? Like, if you, you mean... I don't think it matters, really. Yeah, I mean, they Everybody just... can't win. That's fair. <laughs> that is fair. Yeah. Everybody can't win. I don't, I don't think it matters. Yeah, and they just re-signed Kyrie. So, yeah. like, this is... Yeah. And, and we got a very, very, very small sample size of this last year, and everyone kind of erupted that it didn't work. But it takes time. Like, there's two ball-dominant players hmm. that are such good scorers like them. They can't just... They, it takes time. It takes feel. You got to know where someone likes the ball, their spots. They got to get in the flow of the offense. They have to make sure they're getting everyone else involved. So... I think it'll be a slow grind for this team, but yeah, I think they, they have the capability to win a lot of games. There's some fun video that came out, um, you know, as they're getting ready for this game. The uh, Mavericks development coach, God Sham God. Here's some, these are normal, right? I mean, everyone's calling them Wemby arms. <laughs> this is the norm. But this is normal, right? Although now in, with Wemby in the this league, it's funny. This is more about funny. finishing than Wemby. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> it was just funny because he was screaming Wimby or something. Right? He was, he was, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they yeah, do this look was, like Wimby This arms, looks just like a summer workout where you're trying, obviously, you know, that it just kind of emulates a, a long contest from a guy. Very, very, But very. yeah, this is the norm. It's basically showing that you're going to have to get crafty at the rim. But doesn't it sort of, your body. it looks different now that we've seen Wimby do Wimby things. It looks different that that's like a person they're like planning a, yeah, for. Yeah, it's like a personal costume. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, and speaking of, uh, yeah. they will be playing the Spurs tonight. And I know we it's all Victor Wimbanyama talk. It's I mean, even last night, they weren't even playing yet. And there was like a three-minute segment all about Victor Wimbanyama. But Devin Vassell during the offseason, he also got paid. Back. Could, X Factor? Could he be? I like his game. I like his game a lot. I like, obviously, everyone, like you said, we're talking about Victor. We expect huge things from him, but they do have some pieces. They have talent. They're going to defend. You know they're going to be in that system where they're going to, every single night, they're going to play harder than the other team. So that's one thing you can count on. It's just the talent they don't have, the depth they don't have. But yeah, it's going to be fun. They're getting. This is probably the worst team to get the most national TV games ever. How dare you? What have they got, like 13 or 15 it's, it's, national? It's, yeah, 14, I think. It's ridiculous. But From again, one last that's, year. That's the, that's the Wimbanyama effect. It's happening so fast, Shams. I mean, I'm, I'm excited. I, I'm definitely excited. Yeah. I, I think uh, watching him tonight in that environment, I mean, the Spurs have a chance if Victor Wimbanyama is, is that guy. I think they have a chance to really compete. For a playing spot. Yeah, what? Like, what? Are, what <laughs> wait, 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 that's well, it. we don't know. We don't know what New Orleans is going to look New like. New Orleans, we don't know. New Orleans, Orleans Utah. Like Memphis could be weird. We don't Memphis. know. Memphis. Yeah, they're not making the playoffs. I, <laughs> I mean, but it's so you know what? Let's make a friendly it's, wager right now. It's, it's, right. It's, I, think it's, I think it's Memphis or San Antonio. And, and no, we're doing it. We're doing it. Yeah. Loser gets I mean, a tattoo listen, of the other one's you got, choosing. You got Suns, <laughs> Warriors, Lakers, Clippers, OKC. They're not making the playoffs. I like Memphis. I don't think they want to make the I like the Pelicans. Well, they may not want, but I... I don't think that they're going to bring this kid in and then all this. I, I think they're going to make a try for it. It can't be. Listen, it can't be both. He can't be on minutes restriction and try to still make the playoffs with that group. Are we expecting monster minute restrictions? Because they, they've said so far, he, no, we're not necessarily going to do that. I think so, because I think they're also realistic of the expectations of this season. And why play this yeah. kid 35 minutes a game when you don't have to? You're most likely not going to go in the postseason. And sure, if they get off to a magical start and somehow this happens, Boost him up, but this is a long play with this kid. Their whole organization, their future is based around that dude right there. So why why rush it uh, when you don't really have a championship team this year? I want to ask you two this specifically because I'm hearing players, both former and active, talk about this kid. And I know they're being asked about him and you're on the spot and there's a camera in your face, so what are you going to do? But I've also heard like Charles Barkley, who doesn't speak in hyperbole, He's excited to watch him play. Is this, when's the last time you saw this? He's a unicorn. I, yeah. I, I've never seen some of the things that he's done on a basketball court. So every time I watch him, it's a, it's a new experience for me. Yeah. Uh, it's something that I've never seen before. So I'm excited to see the growth. 
um, of his game and see what happens. And you know what it is when when someone's different. Like Zion's athleticism yeah. was different. I'm right. super hyped to watch him play. This kid's different. He's just got the tools. He's got the physical, you know, length and size that we've never really seen at, at that clip. So yeah, it's 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 a unicorn. It's it's so it's <laughs> it's fun. It's exciting. Like I'm gonna watch a lot of Spurs games this year Yay! because of him. This makes me happy. Just. Makes two of you guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm gonna tune in to leave past. I'm gonna pass. Damn it, Lou! Uh, uh, the season hasn't even started. Guess what? Panic button already being hit. That's next on Run It Back. Run it up, run How it back. Dare run you, run Lou. It back. She knowing all over the map because she make a clout. With a short song or the skin tight jeans, Jeez. she get around the. <laughs> Panic button time. We're changing the so topics. Um, look, season's not started for a lot of people, right? But the uh, the off season doesn't leave some of us with a good feeling about what should be happening. So we're going to start with people who need to hit the panic button already. And we're looking at you, Miami Heat. This is an obvious one. They were supposed to do so much during the off season. They did absolutely nothing. It was it was looking to be great. They didn't get Dame. They didn't get Beal. Should Heat fans be hitting? The panic button. I'm yes, but you know not fully, but oh, yes, hit? because everyone else it seems like the Celtics, the the Bucks, they took this huge step, right? Yeah. And the Miami Heat have this glorious year last year. They go on this run. Everyone's talking about Jimmy Butler and playoff Jimmy. Eric Spolster is about to you know get a huge contract to be the highest paid coach of all time. And then for whatever reason, they, they lose Gabe Vincent, they lose Max Struess, and they don't make any drastic changes to a team that at the end of the day didn't win at all last year. So yeah, I'm panicking a little bit just because it seems like there's now a huge gap between them and the top of the East. But then the reason I'm not is because they are the Heat and they are that culture and they do play the right way and they're going to be there. Like they're still going to get into the play in again. It's the postseason, the play in. Uh, yeah. Because we'll if they're a 10 seed or a 6 seed, I still it, I still don't want to play them in the postseason. They're the poster child for that. Yeah, like I, I don't want to play them first round. I'm not panicking. Miami <laughs> always crashes the party. <laughs> they always crash the party. They always find a way in. Um, and look, speaking of duos, Jimmy and Bam should be enough for them to compete at a high level. You know, those are all-star caliber guys. They get paid like it, they play like it. And like I said, they're always put them, they always put themselves in a position where, um, you know, they make deep playoff runs. So I don't think we panic yet. All right, then we got another one. I'm gonna panic on this one. So Memphis Grizzlies, you don't have John Morant for 25 games. For Steven, sure panic. Uh, that's, right, done? Okay. Yeah, 20, 25 games without one of, your, one, one of your better players and no Steven Adams? Yeah. That's tough. Gonna, oh, but yet the Spurs aren't going to make the plan. I'm going to play devil's advocate here. I'm going to steal. You're putting Memphis above the Spurs, regardless. Absolutely. Yes. They've I been think there if before. I think if John Morant was suspended for the full year, they're still going to have a better record. Uh, than, that's than that's hurtful. <laughs> but here's the thing: 25 games. It's not like a. It's not a week. It's not. It's not two. This is a huge chunk that could put them yeah. out of the postseason. But with that being said, John Morant is John Morant, and he is going to be ready to go when it comes. And I, I'm hopeful that he changed. I'm hopeful that he grew up. But on the court, there's no questions about him. He is a bona fide star. And with 25 games, I'm not good at math, but they still have, you know, 50 or whatever, some, some games left for him, with him <laughs> in the lineup where they can make a huge run. I mean, they did tread water when he was out last season. I know they've lost a few pieces, but they were able to – kind of keep it afloat without him. Yeah. And so they, they got to do it again. And they, they, I mean, they lost Dylan Brooks. They, they added some other pieces. But yeah, this team, they still have Jaron Jackson. They still have Desmond Bain, who's one of the better shooters in the league. So they still have the pieces to go out there and kind of tread water till he gets back. And I think it's enough time that when he is back, they can still get in that lower half of the seating and, and uh, play in. And again, this is one of those teams that's going to be in the bottom half of the playoff standings, yeah. and then someone's going to have to play them fully loaded with John Morant, and that is going to be no good. What's the latest on him as far as, I mean, it, we obviously haven't seen him in quite some time. What kind of off season was he looking at? Yeah, I mean, I think Adam sort of even talked about it last night, counseling, working with the league, trying to make sure he stays on track for a return after that 25 game suspension but that's why you're Memphis you go out and you go get Marcus Smart you go out and you get Derrick Rose I think the idea behind getting Smart about was smart, so that okay. he can start for John Morant mm -hmm. and, and, then, and then once John Morant's back you can play play the two in the backcourt together 
I, for, I forgot Marcus Smart was there. Yeah, definitely. I was hoping you would always forget that, and that the world would forget that Marcus Smart was By the way, he is also the definition of a grit and grime Memphis Grizzly. Like, he is a... He's yeah. what Dylan Brooks wanted to be. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah, he, you know what? what That's a perfect way to put it. Thank yeah. you. He is what Dylan Brooks wanted to yeah, be. Yeah, so it is, it's a hell of an upgrade. Do it. Yeah, they're going to be just fine. All right, so Sixers, I mean, we had the live breaking news earlier from Shams that Harden is officially, he's there. He's, he's there, but um, he's there, but 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 this I mean, is a panic button sitch. I mean, you're not going <laughs> to have James Harden. I mean, it, it's unlike, he's going back to Philadelphia with the mindset of he's going to restart his ramp up process. Now, how long that ramp up is going to be, you know, only James Harden, only the Sixers medical staff, they know how long that ramp up will be. But this is a guy that has dealt with hamstring injuries in the past. Uh, but I think when you when you're James Harden. What he meant to that team, I think he averaged 21 points, 11 assists, led the league in assists. This is this guy's not in your lineup tomorrow, which I don't expect him to be. He's right. not expected to play tomorrow. I, I I personally don't expect him to play anytime soon. This is a guy that's been has done one five on five in a month. That doesn't sound like a guy that's ready to play now. It, but I mean, come on, like without him in the lineup, look, look Tyrese Maxey's going to be. I a just stud, would though. like to talk about the Philadelphia 76ers. About basketball, nope. One time he hijacked it. It's been no, but it's been years <laughs> like this. It's wow. been years, whether it's something with Doc or something with Joel or ben Simmons. James Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons it's always something that has nothing to do with how they play. Yeah, it's it's panic at the disco, Michelle. <laughs> it, it, it is panic. Pan, the, he's he's if he's ramping up right now, it's it's for the Clippers. You know, what I mean, he's right? not. He's ramping up for. A, <laughs> He's ramping up for another team. He's not That's playing so there. I think that that, that he, the the bridge is burnt. Like he he's not going back there, and it's going to be a huge onus on Joel, Tyrese Maxey, these other guys to kind of carry that load while he's out because I can't see him playing another game in Philly. I love it. Ramping up on day two of your new job is really a that's a good look. Yeah. It's a really good look. Lou didn't need a ramp up. I'm doing. I mean, which is like I, this is my ramp up. Lou didn't need a ramp up. He right into the storm. Uh, coming up, it's officially going to happen now. The time where we give picks because we are really run good it up, at it when run, run it back, back returns. Yeah, what was our streak last year? Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, and run it back, run it back, run it up. This NBA season, there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel because right now FanDuel's hooking up all customers with three months of NBA League Pass when you place a $5 bet on the NBA. It doesn't matter if you're new to FanDuel or already have an account. Everyone can watch and bet the action live with NBA League Pass. So download the app today and see why FanDuel is America's number one sports book. It's prop party time, y'all. Um, Chandler, are you going to take it away for us first? We have. Yeah. Um, I got the Celtics in the Garden, minus three and a half. I feel like that's a really low spread. I feel like the Celtics are really good. Knicks, who knows? I don't like that one, but go on. Understood. Minus <laughs> three and a half. I think they're going to win by four. And I got the Wimby over. Again, I think this is rather low. I think this is – Dallas isn't the greatest defensive team. I think he goes for a 20-piece. Okay. I like that. Lou? I got Jordan Poole over 24-5. Love it. I don't even I know who they play. I know he's going to get 25. Tonight. I like that. Uh, doesn't play, pay great unless you uh, put some real money on the line for that. And I like Detroit money line um, against Miami tonight in Miami. Mm. I like this. I like this. I, I also went with points because it felt low. And maybe it's just a day one type sitch. But uh, Scoot Henderson over 13 and a half. And Kawhi Leonard, get to see him at least one day. 23 and a half points, the over on both. I'm optimistic like about these. And uh, today, it's a week of birthdays here at Run It Back. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Hey, so today is Chandler's birthday. To I got you a special you. cake. Cha -cha -cha. And by the way, yesterday was Michelle's and Friday's. Is it's, Lou Wills. It's, uh, it's technically one of my extra cakes. Um, so happy, <laughs> happy birthday. Happy birthday, to the guys. Big three. See you guys tomorrow. God, we're, I'm old. Smell it. How old are you? 48. Run it back, yeah. Run it up, the run it back, run it back, run it up, run it back, yeah. Run it up, the run it back, yeah, yeah.